this Navy Day, the DuPont Company brings you the Admiral Who Had No Name, starring Robert Montgomery on the Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. To protect the floors, woodwork, and furniture in your home, we recommend DuPont Super Clear Varnish. Clear and sparkling, it enhances the natural beauty of any wood surface. It does not appreciably darken even light-colored woods. Whatever your varnish needs, you will find a DuPont varnish that will do the job. Varnishes made by DuPont, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. And now, the Admiral Who Had No Name, starring Robert Montgomery on the Cavalcade of America. John, John, open up. Who is it? Blake. Hurry, John, open the door. Close it. What's the matter, Blake? You've got to get out of here. Leave Tobago? Now, right now. You stay here two more hours and you're liable to find a rope around your neck. You want me to run like a coward? Don't be a fool. We know you're not a coward, but you killed a man, John. A mutineer who attacked me first. It was his life or mine. I'll stand trial. What kind of a trial? You wouldn't stand a chance. That speaks well for justice. There'll be no justice, and you know it. You've made enemies. Because I speak my mind against tyranny and oppression. Don't argue principles now, John. Just listen. There's a horse for you outside. And passage on a ship leaving in an hour for North Carolina. America? But what could I do there? Stay alive, which is more than you do here. Now, get out of the West Indies, John, and stay out, or you'll dangle from the end of a rope. The year 1773. This is a story they tell in North Carolina, a mysterious tale of one young man who came to Edenton in a time of storm, a wanderer from the sea, a stranger, without home, without friends. Oh, I'm sorry. Stay where you are. Eh? What the devil? Don't shout. I'm no highwayman. Then why the pistol, sir? I mistook you for an enemy, and unfortunately, sir, I have many. I couldn't help our collision on the wharf here, but you certainly can help pointing that pistol at my stomach. Do you mind? I'm sorry, sir. It's a dark night. My apologies. Uh, quite all right. Good night, sir. Uh, well, well. Big Oh, well. Mr. Jones. Didn't expect you until morning. Good evening, sir. Oh, Captain Ladd, I'm glad you're here. Why? What's the matter, sir? That young man hurrying off the dock. Do you know him? Aye. He took passage from Tobago. West Indies, eh? Aye. And curious it was, Mr. Jones. Coming aboard in the middle of night, near Mistress at that. Hurrying away from Tobago, eh? What's his name? Well, he said it was Smith. Smith. Eh, not likely, though. What's he like? Well, it didn't get much of a chance to find out. He kept to himself. But he did seem to know the sea and ships. I'd take it he was a seaman one time or another. Yeah, I see. Well, um, I'll see about my cargo in the morning, Captain. We'll discuss terms then. I'm going to the tavern. <laughs> what do you have, Mr. Jones? Why, nothing, thank you, but... Tell me, bartender, did you see a young man come in here a minute ago, a seaman in a hurry? I did that. He went in that room. Oh, thank you. Now keep a bright lookout. I'd say he was looking for a squall. Hey, careful, Mr. Jones. Well, we meet again, Mr. Smith. What? Oh, it's you. May I join you? If you'll excuse me, sir, I was just leaving. Oh, wait a minute. Why the hurry, Mr. Smith? Is there something wrong with that name, sir? Wrong? Well, I don't know, is there? Sir, as neither of us was hurt earlier in our encounter... Why can't we let the matter stand? Because I'm curious. I'm sorry I can't satisfy that curiosity. I could call the watch, Mr. Smith. Then go ahead and call them and have it over with, sir. I'm sick of running and hiding. Call the watch and tell them that John Paul is here. Return me to Tobago. I'd rather hang a hundred times than hide my head and my name. Go on, call them, sir. Mr. Paul, will you join me in a drink? I... What are you going to do? Mind my own business, of course. Whatever made you run from Tobago is none of my affair. Thank you, sir. Good. Now, I'm Wiley Jones, planter. My home's not far from here. My name is John Paul. As for my home, nowhere. Well, you're in America. Why not make it your home? Doing what? Oh, probably your old profession. Anyway, you know my name, Wiley Jones. If ever I can help you, please don't hesitate. 
America's a wonderful place, Mr. Paul. Someday, perhaps soon, it will be even more wonderful. What do you mean by that? Good night, Mr. Paul. I hope we meet again soon. Mr. Jones, sir. Yes, what is it, Billy? There's a man to see you, sir. Oh, who? He won't give no name, sir. Well, what's he look like? Do you know him? I never saw him before, Mr. Jones, but he's, uh, well, he's kind of ragged. And looks like he ain't it for a long time. All right, Billy, thanks. Send him in. In here, yes, sir? In the sitting room? Yes, Billy, in the sitting room. Yes, sir. Well, I'll be standing right outside the door, sir. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the, the gentleman, sir. I, uh, I must apologize for this intrusion, Mr. Jones. Good Lord, Mr. Paul. Here, sit down, man. Uh, Billy, get some food quickly. Yes, sir, right away, sir. <laughs> I'm not very presentable, am I? What happened? I've walked here. From where? <laughs> From all over. What have you been doing these past few months? Oh, a little bit of everything. Working on the docks. Docks? But why, ma'am? I suppose because it was near the sea. Then why didn't you take a berth on a ship? I tried. But I... But you... What? I couldn't, Mr. Jones. You've never been a captain, sir. No. So you wouldn't know how it feels to stand on the bridge of your own ship, giving orders, watching her canvas spread to the wind, and her wake flying white behind you. And you wouldn't know how it feels to take a berth as a seaman with every bone inside you aching to take the quarterdeck and... Well, pride goeth before a fall, I suppose. I see. Well... Put it down here, sir. Uh, yes, Billy, in front of our guest. Guest? But I stopped only to see you, Mr. Jones. Oh, then you have a place to go? No, sir. Billy? Yes, sir, Mr. Jones. We'll have a guest for a while, Billy. Mr. Paul will use the big room upstairs. Better get it ready. Yes, sir. Mr. Jones, I can't. Why not? I'm a stranger to you. You don't know why I had to leave Tobago. I I may be a murderer, for all you know. I'll risk it, Mr. Paul. Why? Well, let's say that someday you may be able to do me a favor. Anything, sir. Anything. Oh, you better hold that answer until you find out what the favor may be, Mr. Paul. <laughs> John. I've had a good instructor. A seaman on a horse. <laughs> Must be a strange sight. <laughs> yeah, let's stop here a moment. <sighs> this is where my plantation ends. Isn't it beautiful? That view of the sea. Smell it, Wiley. Gets in a man's blood. I'll hate to leave this place. Uh, don't, then. Wiley, I've been your guest for three months. And it's time I told you why I had to leave Tobago. There's no need. I want to. Very well. I... I killed a man aboard my own ship. Oh? He was a mutineer. I was captain, he attacked me, and I ran him through with my sword. Oh, why didn't you stand trial? The admiralty would have cleared you. Mutiny is a crime. But for me, trial would have meant prison. You see, I had enemies. They wanted to ruin me. But that's past. What worries me is the future, if I have one. I'd say you had a good deal of future. Have you thought about making America your home, John? My home's where my flag is, sir. Your flag flies over America. Does it? Don't you think so? Wiley, I don't like all this talk about fighting against the crown. You think it's just talk there? Well, now it is, yes. But it's dangerous. It's treason. No one would be fool enough to risk his neck. There must be a lot of fools, then. Fools they are, then, Wiley. No one but a fool would think of treason. I wonder if it is treason, John. It's colony. Start a rebellion and it's treason. We wouldn't be rebels. Our quarrel isn't with England. Only a small group in power who won't grant us the rights of free men. Oh, well. Anyway, it'll probably all blow over. At any rate, it's nothing for you to think about. John, if the colonists are forced to resort to strong measures, where would you stand? I'd be bound in honor to fight for my king. Without knowing the fact? There is no other fact than loyalty to the mother country. Liberty is a very important fact, John. Liberty? You left Tobago to keep yours. Well, that's not fair, Wiley. I wouldn't have received fair treatment if I'd stood trial. All right, you rebelled against injustice. So might the colonists. You're trapping me, twisting the argument. Anyway, mine was an isolated case. It has nothing to do with a general rebellion against the crown. And if that struggle takes place, it will mean fighting among ourselves. You and... Oh, Wiley, we're arguing. That's no good. No, it's not. Words won't convince either of us. The truth has to come from inside. It has to be felt. Of course. And besides, you're not a rebel. What if I were? No, but you're not. How would you feel about a rebel, John? The same as I felt against that mutineer. 
that I was destroying a dangerous thing. Quite a handsome lad. Yes, yes, he is, Mr. Reynolds. He dances well, too. <laughs> Particularly with my daughter. Robert. Where did he come from? Uh, Scotland. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds, sir? Wiley, John. Good evening, Mr. Paul. Well, Dorothea, having a nice time? Wonderful, Father. Mr. Paul is an excellent partner. I think the next dance is mine, Miss Dorothea. Why, it's an honor, Mr. Jones. Well, Mr. Paul, enjoying yourself? Uh... Uh, very much, thank you. Yes, sir. You must come over again. Perhaps ride around the plantation with us. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> Keeping an eye on my daughter, sir. What? Oh. <laughs> oh. She's very lovely. Yes, yeah, she is. Well, Mr. Paul, I suppose you've heard all this talk about rebellion. I have. And what do you think about it? That it'll blow over, sir? Mr. Yeah. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Yes, what is it? I have a message for you, sir. Let me see. Excuse me, Mr. Paul. Certainly, sir. What? The idiot! Fool, it can't be true. What is it, Mr. Reynolds? Mr. Paul, something has happened. Excuse me. Will you stop the music, please? Well, please well, stop well, the music. Well, what is it? Reynolds, what is it? Jones, Smythe. Yes. Gentlemen, please come into my library. John, what's happened? I don't know. Mr. Reynolds received some sort of message. If the ladies will excuse us for a few moments. This way, gentlemen. Step in, Mr. Reynolds. Gentlemen, if you please. If you please. A moment ago, I received a message. One of the most serious content. What is it, Reynolds? A crowd of hot-headed fools destroyed a cargo of tea. What? Dumped it overboard into Boston Harbor. When? Not over two days ago. This is treason. Exactly. The rebels have made the first move. They have deliberately confiscated His Majesty's cargo. Uh, we'd better wait until we get all the facts. What more do we need to make us realize that a few hotheads can bring on rebellion? But uh, let us consider what prompted this action. Prompted? Mr. Jones, that tea belonged to His Majesty. It was destined for the colonies and the duty therefrom to go to the crown. Yes, duty to the crown, and without proper representation of the colonies. Gentlemen, it's time we renewed our allegiance to the king. The wine, please. Fill your glasses, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I give you the king. God bless him. Wiley. You're not drinking. You'll have to excuse me, John. Gentlemen, you'll excuse me now. Wiley, wait. Wiley, why didn't you drink that toast in there? Whatever I am, John, I'm not a hypocrite. You can't mean that you're... No, Wiley, no. Shocked, John. Not you, Wiley. And why not? A rebel against king and country? A believer in human rights. You'd sacrifice everything you have for a dream? John, there's nothing for us to argue about. I've made up my mind as yours is made up. I thought I'd found a friend. You have. I thought I'd found a friend. Instead, I found a traitor. You are listening to The Admiral Who Had No Name, starring Robert Montgomery as John Paul on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Learning that his benefactor, Wiley Jones, is one of those who favor the revolution, John Paul turns bitterly against Jones. As the second part of our story opens, it is the day after. John is about to leave Jones' home when... You're leaving, John? Yes. I'm sorry. So am I, Wiley. Now, it's not necessary for you to leave because our principles differ. There's no reason. Do you think I could stay here after last night? All right, leave if you want to. Wiley, why must you risk everything you have? Do you think a rich man loves liberty any less than anyone else? It's a question of loyalty. That's right, and I remain loyal to my principles. Wiley, Wiley. All right, Joseph, I'll be right in. I wanted you to meet a friend, John, one who might have helped you. I don't need any help. But someday you may. Is this the young man you were telling me about, Wiley? Yes, Joseph. John, this is Joseph Hughes. Our delegate to the Continental Congress, when it's called. Joseph, this is my friend, John Paul. I've heard a lot about you, young man. I'm honored, Mr. Hughes, but now if you'll excuse me... I'll see you later, Mr. Paul. No, I'm leaving. Leaving? But Wiley told me that you might have a talk with me. Joseph, Mr. Paul does not agree with our ideas. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Gentlemen, apart from ideas and principles, 
Do you realize what price you will pay for this rebellion? You have no army, no navy. The English navy will choke your coast. The ships will drive yours from the sea. Think how foolish it is. The Royal Navy will blockade your ports. Her guns train on your seacoast. She can land troops, supplies. You have strong opinions. I know whereof I speak, gentlemen. I've served in the Royal Navy. Uh, Thank you for telling us, John. That explains a lot. Now I must go. I... I wish you luck, Wiley. I owe you much. I wish I could repay you. Once I thought you could, John. And I think I know how you mean. I'm grateful, Wiley, that you've never asked me. That decision must come from you. And perhaps someday it will. Goodbye, John. God bless you. Goodbye, Wiley. God grant we never meet his enemies. Something to eat. Anything. <laughs> from the looks of you, I'd say you've come far. Is there news from other parts about the way things are going? What things? Oh, will there be a revolution? Do you want to fight and die? Oh, it ain't the dying, sir. The living that counts. What do you mean? The living. Living free with your own country that you built. I see. Thank you. Well, I'll bring some food and we'll talk more. Oh, no, never mind. I'm going. There must be some place free of fools. <laughs> Mr. Smith. He's away, sir. I can help you. Oh, you'll shoe my horse? I can do it, sir. Is that your job? No, sir. It's my father's and my brother's. I'll wait for them. Oh, they won't be back today, sir. They're meeting. Meeting? Well, yes, you haven't heard, sir. Heard what, miss? Well, they're asking those that can to be ready to fight. Here, too? Oh, it's all over the colony, sir. Yes, I know. It's like a disease. I suppose you'll be proud when your menfolk are fighting. No, sir, not proud, just just glad. Glad of what? Of war? No, I'll be glad like they are, sir, that someday this will all be free, like a new country, my father says. One where a man can have a voice in the government he elects. Why, they... Sir, you're not waiting to have your horse shot. Sir! <laughs> the sooner we start, the better, I say. Will you tell me why you want to fight? I've no quarrel with England or the king. I follow my conscience. Yes, my soldier, a piece so sweet as to be purchased at the price of change and slavery. Forfeit it, almighty God! Who is that man that just spoke? Why, Mr. Paul, that's Patrick Henry. Uh, Mr. Hughes. Mm, yes. Oh, uh, Mr. Paul, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I'm Mr. Paul. Well, I haven't seen you since that night at Wiley's. What are you doing in Philadelphia? I don't know, sir. I thought you'd gone back home, overseas. Do you want something, John? I don't know. I, I started back to England, but I couldn't leave. Somehow I couldn't leave. There's still time. I know, but there's there's no time for me. I'm confused. About what? About myself, I guess. What I want. What's right and what's wrong. At first, I thought it was all madness that you and all the others, Franklin, Adams, all of them, that they and their followers were mad. Ah, uh, perhaps they are. Mad to rise up against the odds that face them. But it's a fine and wonderful madness, John. The same that made them cut a country out of wilderness. Fail or succeed, they're right. Because they believe in liberty. Liberty? Yes, you'll be hearing a lot about freedom and liberty these days, John. But remember this. Those words don't mean a thing unless they give you the right to have a voice in government. That's what this is all about. Mr. Hughes, for many months I've been traveling all over the countryside. A man hears things from people. I've talked and I've listened to them, to lots of Americans. What did you hear? That there's a fight against tyranny coming. 
But there's something remarkable about it. Hmm? How do you mean remarkable? Well, it's... It's something new, sir. Right here, it's going to be proved. And proved so that men in all lands will see it. That the people are capable of making their own decisions. And it's right. It's right, sir. Hmm. John, you have defined what we are fighting for. I'm glad you feel that way. It's what the people feel, sir. And they made me feel it. As I said, there's something new in the land. And in the sky. Something more than a word. Sometimes it's a look, a smile, a, a gesture. What is it? It's hope, John. The hope that someday our country will be the ideal of men who love freedom. What will be your choice? Where will your allegiance lie? I think I know, Mr. Hughes. And I think you know. Afternoon, Billy. Mr. Paul! Mr. Paul! <laughs> Is Mr. Wiley in, Billy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You come right in, Mr. Paul. Thank you, Billy. Wait a minute. You better come see, Mr. Jones. You better come see. All right. John. I've come back, Wiley. I knew you would, and I knew you'd be wearing that. It fits, doesn't it? Yes. Outside and inside. Lieutenant John Paul, United States Navy. Mr. Hughes could appoint one officer. He named me. Well, that's fine. You know, John, I've come to regard you as a son. And I know that I'm going to be very proud of my son. Thank you. Wiley, you once asked me to do you a favor... Now, since you feel the way you do, I have one to ask in return. Anything, John. I don't know what lies ahead for me, Wiley. Whatever it is, I want you to be part of it. You are the man who first taught me that honor must change its course to include not a single conscience, but that of all mankind. What do you want, John? Wiley, I came to this country for refuge. John Paul, a stranger, without friend, without home. Now, in this time of divided loyalties, I want to declare mine to America and to you. I want to adopt your name. Not John Paul anymore, but John Paul Jones. In the service of our Navy and our country. In just a moment, our star, Robert Montgomery, will return. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Truly, chemical science makes for better living. You can start anywhere. Take your car. An automobile is four wheels, and while we don't think of it as such, it is chemistry in the sense that chemistry improves it in dozens of ways. I mentioned wheels, for instance. Well, wheels have tires. And tires contain chemically made rubber and chemically made DuPont Cordura rayon. In the body of the car, you find motor mountings, grommets, and many other molded parts that are better because they are made of DuPont neoprene. The heater hose and jackets on the ignition cables are heat-resisting, oil-resisting compounds made of this same chemical rubber. Take the metals in your car. Grills, bumpers, hubcaps are electroplated for protection and appearance. They're made better by chemistry. Look into the transmission. The gears are better today because they are made more resistant to wear by a chemical process. DuPont butacite plastic interlayer in laminated safety glass protects motorists from flying glass in case of accident. DuPont lucite plastic is used in dials, reflectors, lenses, and ornaments. Outside, on a great many cars, the finish is DuPont Duco lacquer or Dulux enamel, both products of chemistry. And you take care of these better finishes with other products of chemistry. The chemists who developed Duco and Dulux also developed DuPont Number no. 7 polish to keep these finishes looking beautiful. 
With number seven, you can remove dull traffic film and restore the original luster quickly and easily. If your car is new, you can use DuPont Speedy Wax, which will wax polish the finish in double quick time. All these easier, better ways of doing the job are contributions of chemical science. And of course, when those cold winds begin to blow and winter is here, you'll feel secure because you've taken the rust and sludge out of your radiator with DuPont Cooling System Cleanser, stopped any leaks with DuPont Cooling System Sealer, and protected your car against cold weather freeze-ups with Five Star, Zerone, or Xerox Antifreeze Solutions. All DuPont products. Chemical science contributes abundantly to the modern automobile and to its care. Many of the chemical contributions which have done so much to improve modern motoring are DuPont Better Things for a Better Living Through Chemistry. Ladies and gentlemen, our star and a commander of the United States Naval Reserve, Robert Montgomery. It's been a pleasure to appear on Cavalcade and to play the role, role of John Paul Jones. Uh, he was a hero and a patriot who gave our Navy its first traditions of valor and victory. Those traditions, we who have served in the Navy, hope will be advanced today by the support of the American people. This support can be shown by an increase in naval recruiting and in any efforts to safeguard that liberty which men like John Paul Jones fought to establish. Thank you again, and good night. Next week, Cavalcade presents the first lady of the theater, Helen Hayes. Miss Hayes will play the thrilling role of Carrie Chapman Catt, who devoted her life to fighting for the political freedom of American women. Next Monday night, be sure to hear Helen Hayes as Carrie Chapman Catt in the flame on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Don Bryan. Our play was written by Russell Hughes. Robert Montgomery is star and director of the current Universal International production, Ride the Pink Horse. Featured with Robert Montgomery in tonight's play was House Jameson as Wiley Jones. This is Bill Hamilton inviting you to listen next week to The Flame, starring Helen Hayes on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Uh.